Jim Brown is widely considered the most dominant football player to ever live. Blazing speed combined with brutalizing power, his game is like a mythical being. When the Cleveland Browns were at their heights, yes, 60 years ago, Jim Brown was at the epicenter of the NFL's explosion in popularity. But it's been over a half a century since Brown graced the NFL, so just how good was he actually? Jim Brown was born on February 10, 1936, on St. Simons Island off the coast of Georgia. His father, a pro boxer, left when he was an infant. Not long after, his mother moved to Manhasset, New York, to try and start a new life for her and her son. Young Jim was raised by just his grandmother and great-grandmother in a dirt-poor Georgia home until he was eight. By then, his mother built up enough of a life to move Jim up to New York with her. It wasn't long before we found out just how one-of-a-kind Jim Brown was. Incredible players are labeled Mr. Do-It-All all all the time, but no one could do everything like Brown could. His 13 high school varsity letters prove it. Football? Obviously, check. He averaged 15 yards a carry in high school. Basketball? He averaged 38 points per game for Manhasset, a record that stood until Carl Yaz, a future Triple Crown winner, broke it. Baseball? He threw two no-hitters as a senior and had the New York Yankees looking at him. Track? He was a high-jump champion in Nassau County. Lacrosse? We'll get to it later. Just take our word and check it off. Jim Brown went down in high school lore and took that same mentality to Syracuse University in 1953. Brown lettered in four sports at Syracuse – basketball, track, football, and lacrosse. The crazy part is, he didn't even receive a scholarship at all, and unwritten rules tried to derail Brown at every step. Syracuse football didn't allow freshmen to play at the time burying Brown fifth on the depth chart. As a basketball player, he was the Orange's best athlete, a ferocious defender and rebounder. Brown averaged 13 points, but Syracuse had an idiotic, unwritten rule that didn't allow three black players to start. Despite being one of their best players, Jim's success came from the bench. As a senior, Brown couldn't take it anymore and quit the hardwood. While he was making his way up the running back depth chart, Brown was making a name in every other sport. He was known for showing up to track meets, then immediately leaving and dominating on the lacrosse field in the same day. I don't think you're hearing us. Brown competed in a high jump competition before hanging a hat trick on Army's lacrosse team. In fact, Jim Brown was so good at lacrosse, not only did he consider it his best sport, they had to change the rules because of of his dominance. He led Syracuse to an undefeated championship in lacrosse, won the Lacrosse Heisman Award, and became the sport's first Black Hall of Famer. He's widely considered the best lacrosse midfielder of all time. But let's get to football. As a sophomore, Brown was still the team's fifth-string running back. By the end of his senior season, he was a unanimous All-American selection. Against Colgate, Brown found the end zone six times and kicked seven PATs. He could do it all, remember? Setting a single-game scoring record at 43 points. After finishing fifth in the Heisman as a senior, Brown made his way to the NFL. With the sixth overall pick, all the way back in 1957, the Cleveland Browns made their best decision in franchise history and selected Jim Brown. From the minute he stepped foot in the league, he flipped the football world on its head. At 6'2", 220 pounds, Jim Brown was stronger, faster, and more athletic than anybody the NFL had seen yet. He was uncatchable in the open field, elusive between the tackles, impossible to bring down in the alley, and enjoyed contact more than anyone else. He never finished a run by going out of bounds, electing to punish anybody that tried him. Make sure when anyone tackles you, he remembers how much it hurts. That's a direct quote from Jim Brown on his running style. In his rookie season, he made sure every team felt the pain. The Browns started the year 6-1-1, but Jim Brown's numbers were modest by his standards, tallying just one 100-yard game. That is, until he put on paper the greatest game of football to ever be played at that point. In Week 9 against the Rams, Brown carried the ball 31 times for 237 yards and four touchdowns. That 237 yards was an all-time record, the first 200-yard game in NFL history. It stood as the rookie rushing record for nearly 60 years. The four scores became a staple of Brown's statue as he would go on to record more triple and quadruple touchdown days than anyone else in history. That day in Cleveland showed a glimpse of what Brown would bring in his second season. Even though Brown was an NFL MVP as a rookie, his sophomore year blew every number he posted out of the water. In a 12-game season, Jim ran for 1,526 yards, shattering the old record by nearly 500 yards. In a full 17-game current NFL season, Brown would have been on pace to become one of football's few 2,000-yard rushers. The second-leading touchdown scorer 
Orr in 1958 had eight touchdowns. Jim Brown, the league leader, had 17, over double that. He doubled the entire league in production. In just two seasons, Brown staked his claim as the greatest player in the NFL, a two-time rushing title leader and two-time NFL MVP. His relentless attack of the pylon was only matched by his balance and speed. He ran away from crowds with ease and was the hardest man to tackle since the creation of the pigskin. The only skill more incredible than his ability on the field was that he was always available. Despite leading the league in carries and rushing yards over the next three seasons, he never missed a game. Talk about a fantasy draft dream? Brown was a walking 100-yard, one-touchdown game that never missed. No, really. From his third season in 1959 all the way through 1961, he averaged over 100 yards per game and never had a season with less than eight touchdowns. He was also first-team All-Pro and Pro Bowler each of his first five seasons. 1962, Brown's sixth season, would be the only season that he would not lead the NFL in rushing. His 962 yards was fourth in the league, and it would be considered a huge disappointment. Yeah, finishing a top-five rusher was considered Brown's worst season. Dig a little deeper, and you'll find that he played with a broken toe the entire season and still scored 18 touchdowns. He was that guy. 62 was just a setup for one of the greatest seasons of all time. In 1963, Jim Brown came back with a vengeance, and it started right from week one where he had two of the best plays of his career. One where he received one of his patented pitch plays and took it 80 yards untouched for a touchdown. Then a screen, where he broke seven tackles and miraculously spun out of three Washington defenders for an 83-yard touchdown. He finished that game with 262 total yards and three touchdowns. He proceeded the 63 season by shredding every defense in his path. His 1,500-yard single-season record? He shattered it, rushing for 1,863 yards in 14 games. Just how good is that? At 133 yards per game, he would have totaled 2,261 yards in a full NFL season today, over 150 more yards than the single-season record. Jim Brown really didn't like anyone else holding his rushing crown. 1964 might be the most special season of his career. Brown became the first player to score 100 touchdowns, and he did it in just 93 games, a record that would stand for 50 years. And more importantly, he reached the pinnacle of team sports. The Cleveland Browns won the 1964 NFL Championship. When Brown entered the league, the single-season rushing record was 1,146 yards. Brown broke that in seven of his nine seasons. In 1965, Brown had another dominant season. He scored 17 rushing touchdowns and 21 total touchdowns, the most of his career. His 1,544 rushing yards were the second most ever, behind only himself two years prior. Brown also took home his third NFL MVP award. At the top of the world, 30 years old and still with at least four or five elite seasons left, Brown shocked the world by retiring. Jim Brown retired as the first player to ever break 10,000 rushing yards. His eight rushing titles in nine seasons will never be touched, neither will his five rushing touchdown leader seasons. To this day, his 108 rushing touchdowns is still sixth. Mind you, there's been 52 Super Bowls since he stopped playing. There are two categories that aren't influenced by year that can compare any runner regardless of era, yards per game and yards per carry. Jim Nathaniel Brown is the king of both. His 104.3 rushing yards per game, the only person to average 100 yards per game, will never be touched. It's nearly five yards more than second, which just so happens to be the same amount of yards he got every time he touched the rock, averaging 5.2 yards per carry. The 12,312 yards he ran for in just nine seasons stood for nearly 20 seasons, and it took Walter Payton 25 more games to do it. How good was Jim Brown actually? Well, he's the greatest pure runner and the most dominant player the NFL has ever seen. He's the NFL's version of Wilt Chamberlain, with stats that don't even make sense. Most importantly, he was the ultimate pioneer for the NFL and the game of football, with his play helping grow the game to the product we have today.